If you are in the process of trying to upgrade one of your data packs from a previous version, and much like this copper golem, you feel like you're accomplishing absolutely nothing, then this might be the video for you. In this video, I'll be going over exactly how to get a data pack that was working in the previous version, which at this point would be 1.21.8, working in the newest version, 1.21.9, the Copper Age. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with the first major change that literally broke everyone's packs, and by that I mean actually everyone. If you've ever made a data pack or resource pack, and you want to get it working in this new version, then this applies to you, because it has to do with the formatting of pack.mc meta. So in this file, I've gone ahead and just mocked up what the previous pack.mc meta might have looked like in the previous version. I've included multi-format support, because, you know, the last version in particular, 80 and 81, were almost identical, so a lot of you are probably going to have this. And just as an example, I've also included an overlay, which of course is not required, but if you were using an overlay, there's also some things to update there. So if you had a pack.mc meta that looked like this in the previous version, well, there are a couple different ways it could possibly look in the new version, uh, and I've gone ahead and outlined both of them. So the first case I want to cover is if you're updating your data pack and you want your pack to only be compatible with this new version, like you don't care about back compatibility, you're updating it specifically just for this new version, this is what your pack.mc meta should now look like. Now, if you remember, in the old version, uh, every pack had to define one format that was like its format, but then you could also use that supported formats field to specify, okay, it's meant for this one format, Format, but it also works with this wider range, right? So what Mojang have done is they've completely just done away with that concept of a pack having one like native format, and now you have this min and max. So instead of pack format and then supported formats, you just have a min format and a max format. And now you might also notice that this min format and max format uh, look a little bit different. It's now got a list of two numbers with like a larger number and then a zero. And that is because not only have they changed the format of pack.mc meta, they have also completely reworked how pack formats work in the first place. So obviously before we just had pack formats that were a single number each. And if you wanted to specify a range of formats, it would just be a two element list with the min and the max. And right, the min and the max were both themselves just single integers. The change is that single formats now have a major and a minor version. So for example, the current data pack format is 88.0 right? It's no longer an integer, it now looks like a decimal. But when you're actually putting it in to these min and max fields over here, you don't specify them as a decimal, you specify them as a two element list, where the first element is what comes before the decimal point, and the second element is what comes after the decimal point. So 88.0 looks like this. Now I've gone ahead and spelled out 88.0 here in both the min and the max just to show how exactly this works, but it turns out it also still accepts just single integers, right? So if I put max format as just 88, what this is now saying is that if there are ever any minor pack formats after 88.0, well this just being 88 implies compatibility with all minor versions under 88, right? So if we eventually go up to like 88.5, then this right here will imply that my data pack is compatible with everywhere between 88.0 all the way up to the max, which is 88.5. But if 89 ever comes out, then this will say it's not compatible. Okay, and as you can see, there's kind of a similar thing going on here with your overlays. So every element inside your overlay list also has, you know, you have your directory to point to. And then again, we've got min format and max format. Whereas before there was just a field called formats with a similar, you know, min max range list right there. So like I said, this is what your pack format should look like if you're not going for back compatibility. If you're only looking to support a version that's 1.29 or above, I mean, hopefully this format will stay in the above versions as well, but we don't know that yet. However, if you want to include back compatibility, like for example, if you want to have this pack be compatible with 1.21.9, but like also be compatible with the previous version 1.21.8 here is what that pack.mc meta looks like in that case It's still got min format and max format where min format in this case is just a single integer Which was the format of the previous version that you're compatible with because they were just single integers back then And then max format of course is what we already talked about the difference here is that you have to still include those old Deprecated fields so pack format was removed in this format up above but because you know, pack format was required in previous versions, you have to still include it and specify, you know, the native format 
which would be the previous version. And then you also have to give supported formats, right? So you're going to say, okay, this is compatible with all versions between 80 and 88. Now you may be thinking, should I put, you know, like 88.0 here, right? And the answer is no, because this is an old deprecated field. And the idea is that the game in older versions still needs to be able to read this, whereas old versions could not read this format right here. So you have to still specify the latest version as a single integer under supported formats. It's a little bit confusing, but I mean, if you just study this for a while, then you should be good to go. And then again, we've got a similar thing going on with the overlay. So we still have the new fields, min format and max format, just like up above right here, but you still have to include the old deprecated formats field if you want this to be compatible with previous versions. Now, just to clarify and be absolutely clear about this, that new major minor versioning system started at version 82.0, and the last one that was an integer was version 81. So the back compatibility change is required if you're compatible with 81 or below, and that new like binary major minor thing is required if you're working in version 82.0 or higher. Most of those were snapshot versions. The official version for this release is 88.0, but I just thought I'd be super clear about that. And also, I know this is only a data pack video and it's not necessarily a resource pack video, but I just wanted to quickly mention that all of this also applies to resource packs. So all of the stuff I went over here with like the min format, max format, and then the back compatibility fields, this is also present in resource packs that are in this new version. The only difference is that uh, the old version ended at 64, right, the integer format 64, and then the new version starts at the major minor version 65.0 in resource packs. So other than differences in the numbers, all of that stuff I just talked about also applies to resource packs. All right, so moving on from that, our next change is going to involve just the entire concept of spawn chunks. So for example, in this world, this little block right here is the world spawn, and in the previous version, there would be these uh, spawn chunks that would load around the world spawn, right? And notably, you could change how many chunks were loaded around the world spawn using this spawn chunk radius game rule. Now the change is that that game rule no longer exists, and neither does the entire concept of spawn chunks. Nothing is going to automatically stay loaded around the world spawn anymore. Now it was possible that you were using the spawn chunk radius game rule and the concept of spawn chunks in a data pack to keep something loaded, like maybe in a custom map or something like that. And now if you want to keep a certain area loaded, like for example around the world spawn, the only way to do that is to use slash force load. So just do whatever you can with slash force load to make those chunks loaded. You can't use spawn chunks anymore, and that's really the big change. Next up, we've got a change to the spawn point and set world spawn commands. Now specifically, this change is only to these commands if you were previously specifying a spawn angle. If I was like using the spawn point command to set my spawn and then I specified an angle of 90 degrees, or set the world spawn, specify an angle of 90 degrees, Degrees. These commands will no longer work because you now have to specify both the yaw and the pitch angle, right? So this 90 was previously just the rotation like side to side like this. You now also have to specify the angle up and down like this. And to do that, all you have to do is just add that angle argument. And before it just defaulted to this angle argument being zero. So if you want to keep these commands working in the new version, just take those previous commands you had, you know, whatever you had right here, stick a zero on the end of it. And same with set world spawn, just stick a zero on the end. Now this change only applies if you were previously specifying the rotation angle at all. So if I was just doing like spawn point at S, for example, with no arguments, that still works. If I was doing spawn point at S and then only the position information, that also still works. The only breaking change is if you were specifying these angles before. All right, and next up, we've got a change to the flash particle. So before you were able to just summon a flash particle anywhere and it didn't take any parameters, the change is that now it has a required parameter and that parameter is its color. So we've gained some cool functionality here. You can now summon colored flashes like this, for example, I can summon a black one and there's a red one, for example, like this is really cool. This is actually very nice for data packing. There's a lot more customizability here now, but the breaking change is that that color field is now required. So if you were just saying particle flash before, this command no longer works. To keep the functionality that was here before, it was just a white flash. It was not colored at all. So you're going to have to pass in the color white, right? And it's ARGB, so it's going to be 
eight Fs after it's going to be zero X and then eight Fs for ARGB. And if you just do this, that should be enough to get you up to date and have it work exactly like it did before. Next, we've got a change to player NBT. So there are a few changes to the respawn field inside of a player, which basically just uh, specifies where and how the player is going to respawn. Before, you were able to search for this field called respawn.angle, which would be your left-right rotation like this when you respawn. The change is that that field is now renamed to yaw, right? Because they've added a new one, pitch, so yaw goes back and forth, pitch goes up and down. The game didn't use to store pitch, it would just default to pitch being zero, but now it actually does store both, so it, it stores your yaw and your pitch, and so they've changed the word angle to yaw to be more specific. And on top of that, there was a slight potential breaking change to the dimension field inside respawn. So previously, if you set your respawn in the nether, like on a respawn anchor or something like that, or you used a command to set it in the end, then it would store the dimension in your respawn data. But if you were to set your spawn in the over overworld, then that field would be omitted because the overworld is like the default. The game thought it didn't need to store that if you were spawning in the overworld. And so if a data pack wanted to see if a player was spawning in the overworld, all they had to do was test to see if that dimension field was absent, right? You could say like execute unless data and then say respawn dimension. The change is that because there is no longer a default dimension, the dimension now gets stored no matter what, including if you're in the overworld. So if you're running one of those tests to see if you're spawning in the overworld, you now just directly test for respawn and then dimension Minecraft overworld like that. That's a very minor one. I doubt that'll affect many people, but I figured I should mention it anyway. Next, we've got a change to player heads. So there are a few pretty subtle differences with the way skins are now rendered on player heads. And yes, these changes are indeed subtle. So subtle, in fact, that nothing will actually break in your data pack if you don't do anything about this, but the behavior of player heads that you give yourself might change. And so here I am going to go over how exactly that might change and give you all the information to decide whether or not you even need to make changes yourself. So first of all, if you were giving yourself player heads like this in the past, where you said profile equals, and then you had this properties object with a bunch of like fields inside, usually it was a whole bunch of random letters and numbers, and you could like get it from a website or get it from you know slash data get or something like that this field right here actually goes and pulls a specific texture from minecraft skin database and that texture is persistent whether or not that player changes their skin now if you were doing this before the thing I want to point out is that nothing has changed. If you were using the properties field at all, you can skip this entire section because if you're doing that, nothing is different. The change applies specifically to the case if you were just saying profile equals and then putting a player name directly in there, or if you were doing it by UUID instead of just the name. So I'm just going to go ahead and give myself a player head that's myself, uh, Conyer512, just as a little example here. Previously, if I had just run that command and given myself a head, well then this head that I have in my inventory after I receive it would have automatically filled in all that profile information with like tons of random letters and numbers, and it would have saved this skin. So crucially, before, if I had given myself a head exactly like this, and then gone and changed my skin to something completely different, well this head that I have in my hand, as well as the one placed on the ground, would not change. Now this is what's different in this new version. If I actually go ahead and look at the data that's on the head in my hand right now, I can say data, get entity at s, selected item, selected item, there we go. Uh, if I actually look at it, you can see that the profile just contains my name. It doesn't have any more of that additional uh, profile texture stuff in it. Which means if I change my skin, all of a sudden this head will change. The head that's in my hand will change, the head that's on the ground will change, because all it has saved is my name. So every time a client renders this head, all it has to go on is my name, and my name points to whatever my latest skin is. So these heads can now change, which is why when I actually mouse over it in my inventory, it says dynamic. Now this is completely new behavior. This has never existed in the game before. And if you like this, that's great, right? You can just keep on using this behavior and that's how it'll work now. But I have a feeling there are at least some of you out there who want to use this method to give yourself a head and have it be static and not change with my skin, just like it did in the previous version. And I'm about to show you how to do that. So rather than just giving yourself a player head with the profile of that current player, what you now need to do is say slash fetch profile 
Uh, and you're going to do this in the command line, right? Don't do this in your data pack. Actually do it in the command line just like I am right now. You're going to say fetch profile name or ID if you have the UUID and then give the name of the player. So I'll just pass my own name in here and you can see that it outputs this little piece of text with a whole bunch of different options and I can click on any of these to actually copy that full texture information that I was talking about earlier. So I can say give item right there and it'll run <laughs> this crazy, crazy command and that'll give me a head, right? And now you can see that this head in my inventory is still my head, but it no longer says dynamic, which means that this head, if I place this one down, this one is now static. It will not change with my skin, whereas this one will. And of course, you can also go and say copy component, which will copy it to your clipboard. And now if I open up, uh, you know, my example function from earlier and just paste what was on my clipboard, it will copy the entire profile component. In order to turn this into a valid command, I would have to say give at s player head, right? Give at s player head and then profile equals. And then this is what you copied and then just close up the little component thing with a end bracket like that. So this is what gets copied to your clipboard when you do that, and this will give you a head that does not change with the player's skin. All right, so that was a lot of talking. That was a lot of explanations. I feel like I've done a pretty good job of explaining like the practical upshots of this change to profile components and stuff like that. But if you actually want to go download this example data pack that I'm working out of, uh, I'll leave it in the video description. And I've got like a full description of what exactly changed about the profile component. If you want to read a little bit more in detail or you can just pause the video right here and look at what I'm scrolling through. But right now I am going to move on to the next change. After that absolute headache of a change, the next one's very easy. It's just a rename to a previous Minecraft asset. And that is that the chain is now called Iron Chain. You can see in the tooltip, I've got advanced tooltips on, it says Minecraft Iron Chain. Previously it was just called Minecraft Chain. And so if you were referencing this anywhere, either like blocks or items or anywhere else in the game, like even in resource packs, you had like textures, item models, stuff like that. Anything that was pointing to Minecraft Chain before before, now has to point to Minecraft Iron Chain, because obviously we've now got a bunch of copper chains, so there needs to be something differentiating them. All right, and last but not least, we have a somewhat subtle change to world gen, and specifically noise settings, which are by far the most confusing and obnoxious part of world gen. So I'm going to do my best to step you through this change one little step at a time. So here is an example noise settings file from the previous version. Now notice I have omitted a lot. Usually noise settings files are absolutely massive. There's tons and tons of stuff in them. And all of that stuff is absolutely necessary, but I've just gone ahead and deleted everything except the specific thing that changed, right? So at some point inside your noise settings file, you're going to have this field called noise router. It's going to be somewhere in there. And then somewhere inside that noise router was this field called initial density without jaggedness and this thing accepts a density function now I'm assuming that if this change applies to you you work with world gen regularly and you know what a density function is so I'm not gonna go through the process of explaining that all I'm gonna say is initial density without jaggedness previously accepted a density function and I've just put in like some example as if I was referencing an existing density function that I had maybe defined somewhere else in this data pack just called it initial density without jaggedness density function the change is that this this field is gone. It no longer exists, and it's been replaced by a field called preliminary surface level. Now, it wasn't just a rename. It wasn't just that initial density without jaggedness is the same, but going under a different name. This new field actually does behave significantly differently. So previously, using initial density without jaggedness, this density function right here would return some value, and the value it returned would be positive or negative, depending on like the X and Z coordinate, and also it would depend on height. So how this field previously worked is that it would search through this density function at every X and Z coordinate to find the first non-negative Y coordinate when coming down from the sky. Okay, and so whenever it finds the first non-negative Y coordinate, well, then it'll say, okay, that's where the surface is going to be at this location, and everything above that is going to be empty space. That's how this field previously worked. Now, how the new one works, how preliminary surface level works, is a little bit different. It looks for a density function that specifically just returns the Y level of where the surface is going to be. So rather than doing that thing where it like scans down from the sky, it now just takes whatever number that is and says, okay, that number is going to be the maximum Y level. So for in this case, I'm standing at Y equals what? y equals 71. So if this was going based off of this particular density function, then whatever density function this is would have had to return the value 70, right? Because 71 is the first one that's air, 70 is the top one that is not air. So this density function just had to return a value of 70. It's no longer looking for positives and negatives, it's looking for literal y coordinates. So from there, you might have the question, how exactly do I go from that previous system to the new one? You know, this density function right here that returns like positives and negatives is 
completely different from some density function that returns a literal y level. Well, fortunately, there is now a new type of density function that can account for this, and it's this type called find top surface. So basically how this is going to work, if you had your initial density without jaggedness pointing to anything right here, it could have been a string referencing another density function like this, it could have been an entirely defined object, could have just been a direct number. How you're going to be able to update to the new version is by just passing whatever you had there right in here. You're going to make a density function that looks exactly like this, because this is basically how vanilla handles it. You're going to say it's of type Minecraft find top surface, say cell height 8. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but that's what vanilla does. The lower bound is the bottom of the world. The upper bound is the top of the world in terms of like literal y coordinates. And then the density right here, you're just going to pass in directly the density function that you had before. So if you were referencing something, if you were passing in an object, if you're passing in a number, whatever was here now goes here. It's as simple as that. And so if you make that little change, you should get working again in the new version. All right, and that's everything. <laughs> if you had a data pack that was previously working perfectly in version 1.21.8, and you make all of the changes that we talked about here, you should get your data pack working perfectly in 1.21.9. Have fun playing with your new copper golem friends. I have been Kanye as always. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all later, my dudes.